Sharon Robertson is a pioneer in the children's book world after creating a book app for her first children's book, Treasure Kai and the Lost Gold of Shark Island, back in 2011. After having great success with this venture, people started asking her for advice, leading her to give workshops and speak at events to coach others and transform their books into apps. She's also published four books on how to create apps, including What is a Book App and Could You Create Create One, How to Choose a Book App Developer, An Author's Guide to Book Apps and How to Market a Book App. Her book apps have won multiple app awards. Congratulations and welcome to Indicator TV, Karen. Uh, Thanks, Louisa. It's great to be here. (laughs) So tell us how you fell into designing um, the app for your children's book. Uh, Well, it was actually quite by accident. Um, It was June 2010 and I was about to reprint my children's book, Treasure Kai and the Lost Gold of Shark Island. When my dyslexic son picked up an iPad for the first time, he chose storybook apps over game apps. So when I picked up my, myself up on the floor, because that was a big shock that he was you know, choosing storybook apps, um, I decided that I, I wanted to turn my book into an app. The whole reason I created my first book was to engage reluctant readers with stories through touch, because my original printed book had treasure chests and toys on it, so it was a very gamified interactive story yeah so i saw the ipad as a way to take that to a multi-sensory reading level that just you know we hadn't experienced before um also i kind of been feeling a little bit concerned about that reprint because because it was a very unusual format of book i needed to print them ahead of time and print on demand was not an option um so I was frustrated, though, because I could only really sell my books in Australia due to how expensive it was to ship the books overseas for overseas sales. Mm -hmm. But I'm also an American as well as Australian, so I wanted to be able to sell my books in America. Um, Social media was taking off, and I wanted to be able to use social media to promote my books globally and sell them globally as well. But with printed books, I wasn't able to do that. And I knew if my book were an app, then I would be able to do that. And that's exactly what's happened. Fantastic. Well, um, we probably should ask, what is an app for those people who don't know? Oh, I wish I had a a two-second answer for you. There's really not a clear definition, which is one of the reasons why people get so confused understanding what a book app is versus like an e-book. And the differences are really in how they're created or developed from a programming perspective and also in how they are bought and read. Um, But a book app is a digital book. And it's read on a device like a smartphone or a tablet like an iPad. Mm-hmm. An ebook, on the other hand, is something that you read using an e-reader like a Kindle or a Nook. But you can also read ebooks using an e-reader app. So there's the Kindle app that you can download and then you can read a Kindle book using your Kindle app on your iPad. So it's a little bit confusing, mm-hmm. but that's that's that but to really understand a book app it's really easier to think about what you can do with them from a creative perspective Mm -hmm. Um, book apps are like ebooks on steroids you can do so much more to integrate interactivity into the story or gamify a story or use animation sound and music to enhance a story or a content experience Um, When you're deciding which format to use, the most important thing you need to do is look at the work itself. So if you have a novel, then you publish it as an ebook because you don't need the bells and whistles that a book app is going to give you um, unless you've got lots of extra content that you want to integrate. If you've got an adult nonfiction book with lots of multimedia content, then you might want to publish it as an enhanced ebook or as a book app. Either format is um, viable. If you've got a children's book, and you want to publish that digitally, then a book app is a terrific option. Mm-hmm. Um, like my book apps, for example, are a twist on the choose your adventure format. So it's a mm-hmm. format, it's a type of reading that you couldn't do with the ebook format, which is why I did a book app. Mm-hmm. But one thing um, to be aware of is that my colleagues who have their books published as both book apps and ebooks say they sell about 10 times more in the app format than they do the ebook format. So wow. that's just something to be aware of. Well, See, amazing. I told you it wasn't a two-second answer. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Um, well, I think you sort of um, you mentioned it before, but can you create an app by yourself or do you need to hire a contractor? You can really do either. Um, there are so many options now for authors and illustrators. I wrote a little book, an ebook called, actually it's not even little, it's big, called What is a Book App and Could You Create One? Mm-hmm. Where I've interviewed 
50 authors who have published their books as apps and each share how they got their app created or developed mm-hmm. and what their process was and their budget. And it shows just how varied these projects are. Wow. A lot of them do the apps themselves. There are a lot of do-it-yourself tools on the market. So if you're familiar with Photoshop, then you can use those tools. But if you're like me and you don't want anything to do with anything technical or production, then you can work with a studio, and there's several of those to choose from as well. Fantastic. Um, so I guess let's get into what's involved in creating an app. Like what sort of things do you need? Okay, good. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, creating an app, when you first look at an app and you think, oh, my gosh, I have my manuscript how do I even get started? It can be quite intimidating, mm-hmm. but it's actually just a step-by-step process. And after doing this for three and a half years myself and in, um, coaching so many people through this and, and interviewing so many suppliers, it really is just about understanding what the steps are. So what I did was I created what I call the dream system when I'm coaching people. I say, this is what you need to do. You need to do this dream system, these steps. So D stands for determine your objectives and get educated. So what's really important there is that you need to understand why you're doing your app and what type of book app you want to create. And then that will help you determine, you know, what type of suppliers you use and what your budget might be. And if you get yourself educated, then you're going to save yourself so much time and money during the process. Then your next step, once you understand why you're doing your app, then you do what I call the R, which is review your book and create your brief. So this is where you plan your app. And again, it's a step-by-step process. You just look at each aspect of an app and you decide, do you want your app to have it or not? Do you want text highlighting? Do you want narration? Do you want sound effects? And you just decide what you want. Because what you're doing is you're creating a document that explains what your app is going to be. So then you can do the next step, which is E, evaluate developers. Because you have to be able to give your plan, what you're thinking your app might be. You need to give that plan to developers so they can give you an accurate cost estimate. So that's, you know, again, steps on how you evaluate developers, I outline for people. A stands for assemble your assets. And what that means is getting your stuff together. So getting your illustrations together, getting your manuscript together and getting any other little um, variables like sound effects together because those components need to be used to put the app together. And then M is just manage your project to completion and how you actually do that in a way that you stay sane. So with most book apps, most of them are going to be self-published projects as opposed to, you know, finding a book app publisher who's going to take your manuscript. There are very, very, very few of those out there. So most people are publishing their books as apps, are doing the projects themselves, or hiring someone to do the self-published project, just so you know. Fantastic. I love how you've broken it down and then given the um, dream to break it down into each component. That's easy to remember. So what are the costs involved in in creating an app? Well, that was the idea because, we, I mean, we all... Um, that's really a how long is a piece of string question. Oh. <laughs> so I know people who have done <laughs> done their apps for a hundred dollars. In fact, I just published an author interview with a man named Denny Curian. Um, if you go to digitalkidsauthor.com forward slash Denny D E N N Y hyphen Curian K U I E N, you can read his story. He um, did the illustrations and the writing and the animation. He did everything himself. Wow. Um, I think the only thing they spent money on was, well, I think it was some music and sound effects. But then other people can spend several thousand dollars if they are outsourcing the editing, if they're outsourcing their illustrations, if they're outsourcing the development. So, again, it depends on what you're creating, what you're doing yourself, what you're outsourcing, and then what type of financial relationship you have with the suppliers you're working with. For some people, you might just pay straight out fees for service. Other people, you might do some kind of a bartering with or a revenue share with. So it, these projects really vary. And that's why if anyone's even kind of contemplating apps for themselves, have a look at the ebook, What is a Book App and Could You Create One? How 27 Writers Did. That's the full title. Even though I've now interviewed 50 authors, I originally had 27 in the book, which is why that's in the title. Um, the reason for that is $4.99 for the ebook version, and you see how 50 of these projects have been done, including how much people spent on them, what developers they used, what their objectives 
perspective was, you know, it really gives you an insight into these different types of projects. Fantastic. Um, can you discuss some of the pros and cons of producing an app in general and perhaps in comparison to publishing a book? Yeah, sure. Um, the pros, I mean, first of all, creatively, you can really create magic with the book app format. Um, you can deliver a multi-sensory story experience. And for me, that's one of my drivers. I've got two dyslexic sons. So for me, bringing touch and narration and interactivity into story is a way to engage them. So mm -hmm. for me, the first driver was creative, but it's also a legitimate publishing option, which is great. Um, one of the things I love is that you've got guaranteed distribution once your app's approved in the app stores. You know, unlike like if you print your book and you get it into a local bookstore and they haven't sold it in a couple of months, they can do return it's back to you. Whereas mm. once you're published in the app stores, it doesn't work that way. You know, you've got that distribution and then you have time to build the market. If you haven't done pre-marketing, you've got that time. Mm -hmm. um, probably another thing is just having access to a global market instantly. You know, we've sold Treasure Kai apps in nearly a hundred countries and it's in English. It's not in multiple languages. Um, that's been in the last three years or so. And we've sold the apps almost every day for three and a half years. That's amazing. Um, all the back ends handled. There's no inventory to manage. So it's really, really easy. On the con side, though, is you don't have a printed product to sign at book events, which can be a real pain. So um, I'm lucky I've still got, I have just a few of my printed books left. But whenever I do events, I talk about the apps, but then I bring books as well for signing. Okay, fantastic. Um, what happens to the apps when there's updates to things like iBooks? Oh, that's a great question. Okay, so I think here is, you know, sometimes Apple, for example, come out with a new iPad or a new device like an iPad mini, or they'll update their software, which is called iOS, which is more information than most of us want to know, <laughs> most of us authors anyway. But um, usually apps work just fine on the new devices. There is a, a small possibility that they may not work well, um, when a new software type comes out or a new device comes out. So what has to ha happen when you are negotiating with your developer on your app is you need to make sure that you include in there that they do what you call manage updates. So make sure that the app's continuing to work when new devices come out. And this was actually, this issue was the issue that got me started on the whole path to writing and speaking and teaching about turning books into apps because I launched three weeks before the iPad 2 came out, so that's how, how long I've been in the market. But um, when the iPad 2 came out, I found that my app would just very, very occasionally um, do something a little bit funky, so I wound up having to take it off the market for a while while we fixed that. Now, in the three and a half years I've had apps on the market, that's the only time I've had an issue, the only time. But I had not negotiated with my developer to do updates and he had moved on to another job and that's why I was out of the market for quite a long time until I could fix it. And that's what got me on my soapbox to say to people, hey, you know, book apps are great, but make sure that you know what you don't know because it's very step by step. It's easy if you know what you're doing, but be aware of this issue. So just another question on that issue with the contractors, um, is it like an extra cost or do they do it as um, a freebie or how does that work? In terms of the oh, update. it's usually part of it because if they're yeah, because if they're updating um, your app, they're updating everybody else's app. Especially if you work with a company that specializes in book app development, mm -hmm. then they'll be updating everybody's all at once. So it is usually you know not an additional cost at all. It's part of the contract. It's just something you want to be aware of if you decide that you want your neighbor to do your app, for example, or you know, you, know, you, you hire a company that is not a specialist in this. And that's what some people do. You know, say, oh, I'm gonna work with my, you know, friend Fred over here, and then Fred gets busy and can't keep up the app. So that's what that's when you really need to be aware of it. Mm, okay. Um, do you have any recommendations for pricing an app? Uh, pricing is a real issue. Um, it's an interesting one because like ebooks, you know, it's almost like a race the bottom on pricing. Um, most apps are priced, book apps are priced around the $2.99 mark. Um, some are up to about $4.99. Uh, 
and others go down to about 99 cents, but 2.99 seems to be about the norm. And the thing about pricing an app is that what Apple, for example, suggests is that you you de- definitely value your content, so you want to price, you know, put a price on your app. Some people will give their apps away for free if they're trying to build awareness of a brand or that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I think I have a thought on that, and it just escaped me. Pricing an app. Oh, um, that's what I was going to say. So for some types of apps, in fact, a lot of apps, if you're talking about a game app or a utility app, which is like a tool or something, those apps will be free. And then they'll have in-app purchases in them where you can level up in games or whatever. Books really don't work that way. Books, pretty much you have to buy the whole thing. And so with books, um, that's why you, you have to price it. It's not like you can use what they call the freemium model where you give it away, give away part of the book for free and then you sell the rest. That just doesn't work. So if you're creating a book app, you need to be um, realizing that you're going to be putting a price on it. And the average price would be around two ninety nine or so. Okay. That's quite similar to an ebook, I guess. Mm, yes. So what are some tips then to market your book app? Oh, look, I've written a whole book on that, but I'll just do something really short and sweet on marketing a book app. Uh, my background's actually marketing. I spent 20 years uh, working in marketing and advertising, even though my degree's in English. That's where I spent a lot of my career. So when I first had my app, I did a lot of testing of all kinds of things with marketing. The bottom line is the best things that I've done to market my book app have been free, and they take time. You know, things like social media and email marketing and Um, getting reviews and doing price promotions and joint ventures with other developers. Those are the types of things. It just takes a little bit of of elbow grease uh, to do, but I do not recommend people spending lots of money on um, promoting their apps because I just haven't seen a return on investment when paying lots of money for ads. And I have spent a lot, I've spent well over $15,000 in the last three and a half years testing different marketing techniques well over that amount of money, probably more like 20. And um, the ROI just isn't there. So lots of free ways. Wow, that's impressive. And I'm blown away with how much you've um, tried and spent. Well, (laughs) yeah, like I said, I've got a background in it and I knew what I wanted to test and why. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, I just share that knowledge. Great. Well, lastly, I guess what are the differences between the app and book market? I think you might have touched on a few of these things before, but... I'll ask you again. Yeah, really, you know, one's one's digital, one's not. But the thing is, both the app market and book and the printed book market require quality writing, quality production, a quality product. They require word of mouth. They require marketing. You know, books don't sell themselves. Ebooks don't sell themselves. And the bottom line is, you know, you create something, you're going to need to market it regardless of the format that it's in. What I love about the app format is it buys you a bit more time because you don't have the distribution pressure, but also you've got that global distribution. And with social media being a global medium, it's just really great to know that I can, you know, fulfill the sale just about anywhere in the world. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and uh, giving us a bit of insight into, into book apps and and, uh, yeah, sure. And if anybody wants more information, my website is um, digitalkidsauthor.com. And you know, I've got links to my books and I've got a free report on there. And I've got lots of author interviews and free content as well. So just dig around on digitalkidsauthor.com and you can learn more. Excellent.